Hello again everyone and welcome back to the underground. Today we're going to be showing you how to use Meshtastic along with ATAC. Chances are if you're watching this video you know what ATAC is or at least have heard of it before. But if you're new to Meshtastic, a brief description of how Meshtastic works and what it is is needed before we go into the tutorial. Meshtastic is an off-grid open source communications platform. You can research this yourself a little bit more on Meshtastic's website, but the short version of how Meshtastic works is very simple. So say you need to send a message from one person to another. Well, ordinarily you could use text messaging using cell towers, or you could use some kind of internet-based chat like, you know, Signal or Telegram or something like that. But what if the cell towers are down, or the internet is out, or you're in an area which doesn't have either of those? Well, Meshtastic can bring the infrastructure to you. All you need to do is pair each device with a small Meshtastic board, and messages can be sent between those two boards using Bluetooth to connect to each smart device. And you can use the app on the smartphones to send the messages. So that's basically how Meshtastic works. It's very simple. Meshtastic itself is a very basic mapping software with a very basic messaging service. But what if we could take Meshtastic's ability to use these Meshtastic boards here, these little $25 radios essentially is what they are, uh, what if we could take those and use another app with that, say, ATAC? Well, let's jump right in and figure out how to do that. On the hardware side of things, you really only need two things. You need a smart device that is capable of running Android. Um, you can use any kind of operating system. I'll show you what operating system these are running on in just a second. And the other piece of hardware that you need is a Meshtastic device. Now for our demonstrations here, this is just a standard Meshtastic device um, that has been modified just a little bit um, to uh, turn the screen off and to have a series of batteries behind it. So, uh, But other than that, this is just your standard uh, Meshtastic device. So obviously at minimum you're going to need two smartphones and two Meshtastic devices. Uh, that's really all you need to get your basic network going, but you can of course add as many as you want as time goes on. And when it comes to software, you're going to need three things as well. Now before I mention that, I just briefly want to mention that this particular device isn't even running normal stock Android. This is Calyx OS. This is just the, uh, one of the um, de-googled operating systems. It is a uh, competitor to Graphene OS and Lineage OS. Uh, Calyx is just the new hotness in that regard. This can change. I uh, just wanted to point out that you don't even need standard Android to run this. Uh, so this is just a simple file browser application to show you the three pieces of software that you need. Also, I should mention, you don't even need to be connected to Wi-Fi to do this. You can do this entire uh, process Wi-Fi free, which is great, um, because all you need to do is have these three files on a thumb drive, pass that off to someone, and you can get this set up from absolute bare bones nothing without using Wi-Fi in an austere environment if you need. So the three pieces of software you're going to need are, of course, the Meshtastic app. So that's the very first one there. Again, Meshtastic, as of the release of this video, it um, it's not in the Play Store right now. You have to sideload it from GitHub. So again, the link to that will be in the description, just like always. Secondly uh, is ATAC. Now, ATAC is in the Play Store, but I have found that their latest version, which I think is 4.5.1 or 2 or something like that, uh, that didn't work for me. Uh, again, this is one of those things that is a little a little frustrating for people who uh, are trying to get this up and going. You have to have the right version numbers for everything. Some versions don't work with some phones. It's a little bit frustrating at times, but fortunately, as of 4.5.0, uh, the team here has had no problem getting this to work. So, again, Meshtastic, whatever latest version you want to get. ATAC, the ATAC app, which I have, again, sideloaded because I don't want to download it from the Play Store. I want to choose what version I want. And again, this operating system doesn't even have the Play Store, so you kind of need to sideload it on this particular operating system. And then thirdly is a plugin. You're going to need a plugin for ATAC that will allow it to talk to Meshtastic. And we will, again, put the link to all of this in the description below. So the first step is to install Meshtastic. So we're going to go ahead and click the APK there, and we can go ahead and go through the uh, package installer process. Uh, you might have to go into your, your settings, depending on what version of Android you have, you might have to go in there into your settings and click allow uh, unknown sources to install apps. 
Uh, but for the most part, you should be good to go. You'll get a prompt uh, to do that. Once you have Meshtastic installed, you can move on to installing ATAC. Again, same process. Could not be easier. Install using the package installer, and you're, you're done with ATAC. And, and before you move on to installing the plugin, you might want to go through the process of setting up ATAC. So if you haven't done that before, go ahead and check out our video on how to install ATAC. It's very simple to do. Once you have ATAC fully installed and all good to go and you've started downloading imagery and you're getting your app set up, now you can go ahead and click the APK for the plugin. Again, use uh, the package installer to install it. Now the plugin will not leave an icon. It will not leave uh, an app on your home screen. Uh, what you're going to have to do is go back into ATAC. So let's go ahead and do that. Now the next step is to get MeshTastic and ATAC to talk together so that they can communicate data and send data over uh, using the MeshTastic network that we're creating with our MeshTastic devices. So to do that, let's make sure that our plugin is in fact installed in ATAC and working. So let's go ahead and open up our menu here. We're going to scroll down to Plugins and we'll tap Plugins. And boom, there we go. ATAC Forwarder is in, it's loaded and uh, it's current. So this is all good. That means everything is functioning as normal with the plugin. Now we need to configure the plugin to make sure that it does in fact talk to Meshtastic. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to open up our menu again. We're going to scroll all the way down to settings, tap settings, scroll down just a little ways until you see tool preferences. Uh, this will allow us to have uh, access to this menu, which shows the ATAC forwarder preferences. Basically, this is just the settings menu for that plugin. So let's go ahead and tap that. Now, here we go. This is where we can configure all of this stuff to make MeshTastic work. So the very first thing you're going to do is select a COM device. Now, when you tap that, it's going to bring up a menu to allow you to select your MeshTastic device. There you go. As you can see, mine's already paired because we, again, just to make sure that MeshTastic is working and that's all good, um, it's already there, it's already connected, so you don't really need to do too much about that. There's also one other thing that you need to do in the ATAC app that is very, very important, at least for this version combination. Again, like I mentioned, ATAC has a version, MeshTastic has a version, and the plugin has a version number, and they all get updated by different people and different teams at different times, and sometimes there's a little bit of wonkiness between all of them. Um, but I've noticed that on this particular version, you absolutely have to make sure to set the region inside the ATAC app, even if you have done it in MeshTastic before. So this is one of those things that just make sure you do it or else you're not, you're going to be frustrated. It took me a while to figure this out, uh, that you have to actually go in and select us. Now you should be good to go. Um, your MeshTastic devices, uh, once you duplicate this on the other phone, will start talking to one another and exchanging data. One of the other settings you might want to check and, and change is the mode and speed. So this is just a standard MeshTastic setting. Uh, basically, with MeshTastic, you can have either fast or long range, but not both. Um, right here in the middle, uh, this medium range and, and fast is kind of the middle ground, where you're going to get a medium range, uh, whatever that means for your environment, and a decently fast uh, transmission speed. This is good for ATAC because again, if you're using ATAC to send messages in a sort of tactical environment, you don't want to send, you don't want to have a refresh rate of like a minute or more. Um, that's why the uh, longer range settings and, are, and the slower speeds are not recommended for use with ATAC. Again, you can choose whichever speed you want. Um, I found that the medium range works well for me and the rest of the team here uh, seems to work just fine and uh, it allows us to send messages decently fast but also with a, a decently good range as well. So once we've got everything configured, we've got everything on the same MeshTastic channel, sharing the same QR code and everything, we can actually see each other's devices in our contacts. So if we go to contacts on both devices here, we can see that phone one is there and phone two is there. And we could send messages back and forth, actually. We could send, let's just see here. Let me go ahead and type one out just to show you the keyboard does work. Test one and send it. And there we go. It already appeared on this device over here. You just click the little GeoChat icon and there you go. Test one. Let's go ahead and respond. Uh, ATAC's pretty cool because it has these little, little icons here. You can click send Roger and then wait just a second. And it should come through on this other device here decently quickly. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you also don't have to send just text messages back and forth using the MeshTastic devices to communicate. You can send other data as well. So let's go ahead and illustrate that. Let's drop a point here. Let's drop an enemy contact off to the off to the west here. Let's get rid of that. 
And let's say, all right, cool. Uh, this particular phone just saw this particular contact at this at this grid location. Let's go ahead and send it to the other device. Now, so uh, let's go ahead and tap your icon there, open up the icons menu, and there we have information about the point. Now what you can do is click down here at the bottom. You can set it to auto send so that if I change the location of this, it will send it automatically, which is pretty cool. And as you can see, boom, it already appeared on this device. But if you wanted to specify who in your group it's sent to, uh, you can send it to specific contacts, and I'll send it again. And there we go. These devices are, again, communicating on just Mesh-tastic, which is pretty cool. So that's how you can use Mesh-tastic to send and receive data back and forth. Now, of course, the, the more amounts of data you use, the quicker you're going to run through your Mesh-tastic battery and your phone battery as well. So that's something to keep in mind. So why would something like this be useful? Well, there are many different reasons, but especially in today's world, I think a lot of people are trying to figure out ways of making their communications a bit more secure, a bit more censorship proof, uh, especially without using cellular or internet based technologies. And mesh networks, just the very nature of how mesh networks in general work is very good for that. So what would this look like in real life? Well, let's say that we live here in this city and we have a group of friends who live in various places across town. And they need a, the ability to communicate with each other and share information and share data without using the internet and without using a cell tower. Now, you can use radios for that, conventional handheld radios, but what if you want to use your handheld radios for, like, voice communications? And you don't want to have to constantly send each other updated positions and things like that. Well, a mesh network like Meshtastic would be great for this. Because if every single person had a Meshtastic device and had ATAC running and things like that, they would be able to share their location and other data with each other seamlessly. This would allow each person to serve as a node so that everyone can talk to everyone else. This means that mesh networks like Meshtastic are very, very resilient, especially when operating in less than ideal conditions or in non-permissive environments. For instance, if this guy right here gets either struck in some kind of war zone or he gets raided or something like that and that node goes offline, well, the rest of the network can still survive without that particular node. Now again, everyone has to have at least a few connections to a node. So like this guy up here, uh, if, if he is not connected but to just one person and that node gets taken offline, well, he's kind of out of luck. But again, this is where the resiliency of mesh networks come in because all you would need to do is set up an additional node uh, somewhere else in the city to bridge the gap, and then there you go. This guy is connected to everybody else once again. And considering the highly mobile nature of Meshtastic, it's a simple little device. It's very cheap. They cost about 25 bucks, and the software is all free. So really, you can set up a lot of different repeaters all over your city, and that way you can make sure that you have a very very resilient network. But that's just Meshtastic. That's just what Meshtastic can do by itself. Why do we need it to talk to ATAC? ATAC is a very specific suite of software. The TAC suite of software is, is made for a very specific use for a very specific set of users, mostly a military use. And really, ATAC isn't really worth very much unless it can communicate with other TAC devices. If you're by yourself and you're using ATAC on your phone and you don't have it connected to anything else, you don't have it connected to a server or via a radio to anybody else, you're going to find that ATAC is a little bit lackluster. You're going to find that it doesn't really have very much use. But if it's connected to other devices in a mesh network like Meshtastic, ah, well, there it could shine. So let's say that this group of friends is living in the worst case scenario, which would be in a war zone. Let's just say this city turns into a war zone. And this guy right here is, you know, doing his job and he is setting up an observation post to kind of monitor traffic and see what's going on here and there. And let's just say that he witnesses a mechanized infantry unit moving across this bridge. Well, if he has ATAC using Meshtastic as the radio, what he can do is drop that on his map and boom, that gets instantly sent to every other node in the network, all without using the internet and all without using a cell tower. This is very handy, especially if you're living in a non-permissive environment or you're trying to plan for the worst case scenario and make your communications plan 
a lot more survivable and resilient even in the worst case scenario. And speaking of worst case scenarios, let's throw in another factor, electronic warfare. Let's say that an enemy jamming unit moves into this area and starts just jamming the signals uh, from this side of the city, south of the river here. Well, of course, you're going to have these two nodes within the realm of jamming uh, go offline. But as you can see, the rest of the network still functions. So obviously, if there's any kind of jamming, these mesh-tastic devices put out such a very low power, there's really no way that you can overcome jamming of, of really any kind uh, with a mesh-tastic device. But again, if that jamming were to go away, uh, these nodes would, again, reconnect to the rest of the network, which is very handy. But jamming itself is going to be very, very difficult to do, as we'll touch on here in just a second. But what if there isn't jamming going on? What if we have a more likely scenario, such as enemy interception and direction finding units moving into the area? So you've got an electronic surveillance station set up that's just listening for any kind of signals in the area, and you've got a couple of direction finding units that are sweeping around trying to find out where signals are coming from. Well, for one, mesh-tastic signals are encrypted with AES 256-bit encryption. So, it's going to be almost impossible for anyone to break that communication. There are, I'm sure there are ways it can be done, but for the most part, like we've mentioned before, AES 256 is really the best you're going to get. And AES 256 is really so secure that I personally wouldn't really worry about it. I'm not worried about it myself. What I am worried about is direction finding. That's a much more big threat because it doesn't really matter if you encrypt your signals with the most best encryption you could possibly find. If someone can narrow down your uh, transmission site, well, that can, give you, that can give an adversary information about you. But here's the cool part about Mesh-tastic. Mesh-tastic uses the 915 megahertz band here in the United States. In other countries, it's different. You have to buy a different uh, Mesh-tastic device depending on where you're at in the world. But for the most part, every country has a very, very small part of the bandwidth, uh, part of the electromagnetic spectrum that is for uh, commercial use. This is a set of frequencies, a very small range, that can be used without a license in the United States, provided you abide by power levels. You can't go out blasting 1,000 watts on 915 megahertz. That just doesn't work like that. But the reason that this is so significant is that so many other different kinds of sources use 915 megahertz. Everything from traffic toll booths to smart devices like a refrigerator or something like that, or uh, your electronic um, power meter uses these uh, a lot of times to transmit data wirelessly. Uh, traffic lights in some areas use this. So really a lot of devices in a city, especially in a modern world, use 900, the 915 megahertz band to transmit on. So what does this mean for direction finding? Well, with so many different kinds of devices running on 915 megahertz, if someone were to try to direction find 915 megahertz signals in a city, this is what it would look like. They would find signals everywhere. This means that for all intents and purposes, 915 megahertz uh, and specifically mesh-tastic devices that operate on these frequencies have what we call a low probability of intercept, meaning that we recognize that in the world of radio communications there is no real way to make a radio signal impossible to detect by an outside force. You're always, if you're transmitting something on the radio waves, you're going to, someone else is going to be able to pick that up. But mesh-tastic devices, since they use this very unique frequency, and it's a very hard to detect frequency in the first place, but it's also uh, there because there's so much background noise and Meshtastic is using so little power to transmit. This means that Meshtastic is a great, great option for communicating in an environment in which you know there's electronic surveillance. So with all of this being said, is Meshtastic and ATAC together a complete solution to uh, a communications problem? The answer to that is no. ATAC and Meshtastic, even by themselves or even when working together, are not a complete solution. We actually see this a lot in the military as well. An over-reliance on ATAC is currently resulting in a lot of cool dudes losing a lot of skills. The number of special operators that get lost because they were relying on ATAC alone to navigate is astounding. So currently our military forces are dealing with a loss of skills due to an over-reliance on this kind of technology. 
So if we were to rephrase the question a little bit by saying, is Meshtastic and ATAC a good way to supplement your other comms while providing an infrastructure for sharing geospatial data? Well, the answer to that is yes. But again, in the civilian sector, another downfall rears its ugly head. And that is that a lot of people think that ATAC is the greatest thing since sliced bread, simply because they see a cell phone on a cool guy's plate carrier. Remember, ATAC was developed for the military, for military use. It's great that today we're seeing people make this software suite more useful for the civilian sector. That's great. And we would love to see more of that. But do not feel pressured to use ATAC if you do not have a use for it. A lot of people get caught up in using ATAC just for the sake of the technology and because it's cool and they don't actually have a real end use for it. Remember, no communications plan is foolproof. There is no perfect solution to any of this. In the communications world, we unfortunately have to live with compromises on pretty much everything. There is no Goldilocks zone when it comes to communications. This radio is not secure enough, or this radio is too expensive or impossible to buy as a civilian, or this one has expensive accessories to make it work, or batteries that are hard to find, and this setup is no different. One glaringly obvious vulnerability of this system is the Bluetooth. The connection between the phone and the Mesh-tastic board. Again, it doesn't matter how secure your Mesh-tastic 915 MHz communication is if someone close to you can easily exploit that Bluetooth connection. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link, and some people might find that vulnerability unacceptable. I myself would agree that Bluetooth in a combat situation is probably not ideal. But what about anything less than a total war situation? I myself am willing to live with the MCON concerns that Bluetooth brings in some situations, but others may not. Other people might not have a problem with the Bluetooth, seeing as the DoD is itself incorporating Bluetooth into a lot of their new devices but they might be skeptical of the ATAC app itself. Since it is created by the military, there is a lot of mystery there that's its own can of worms, and some people might not like that either. And that's fine. I think that sideloading the app and never turning on Wi-Fi seems like a good option, but some people might not want to do that. The point is, Meshtastic might be a good option to actually get some use out of the tools that ATAC provides in a mostly seamless way. I honestly think that this combination is the first major breakthrough that makes ATAC worth it for civilian use. I can take this setup and be sitting in a coffee shop observing and collecting information and no one would be the wiser because I can keep the Mesh-tastic board in a pocket. I'm just some guy flipping through a smartphone at a coffee shop. Good luck trying to route cables to a radio in an environment like that. And with that I can communicate to a buddy across town who's out for a casual hike and doesn't want to bring several pounds of tactical equipment along. I can cover an entire city with dozens of mesh-tastic devices functioning as repeaters for a fraction of what even just one high power repeater would cost. And since they are so small, even with an attached solar panel, one could hide them in a lot of places where a repeater might not be able to fit. And if one gets detected or stolen or lost, it's not a big deal because it only cost me 25 bucks. Yeah, the Bluetooth is a bit unfortunate for some situations. And sure, ATAC isn't perfect or even useful all the time. Every situation will be different, and everyone will have different levels of what they deem to be acceptable levels of risk. Would I trust my life to this setup? No. But I also wouldn't trust my life to ATAC running on a government phone hooked up to a $5,000 radio either. It's a communication tool that makes some things easier. That's it. And now that we've been testing ATAC with Meshtastic for a few months now, this seems like this might be pretty handy to have. Especially at the price point of buying a $25 board and some free open source software. Which is why we wanted to show everyone how to link up ATAC with Meshtastic. Because even though this is really still in development, this technology works very well right now and will only get better over time. So check it out and see if ATAC and Meshtastic could be valuable additions to your communications plan.